Okay, let's go ahead and add these square roots together. So here I have the square root of 20, and let's go ahead and add this to the square root of 80. And if you're thinking, oh, I can do this, I'll just get my calculator out and take the square root of 20, and then I'll take the square root of 80, and then add those decimals up. Well, of course, that's logical, and that certainly makes sense, but that's not what we're talking about in this particular problem. Okay, what we want to do is use our algebra knowledge of square roots and radicals and all that kind of good stuff, and all the properties associated with square roots and radicals. By the way, I use this term radical. This is a radical symbol in algebra, okay? A lot of you might say, well, that's a square root symbol. Yes, we call this a square root as well, but if I had a little three right here, well, this one now would become a cube root and not a square root. So just this symbol uh, in and of itself uh, is referred to as a radical symbol. So you wanna use all the properties uh, that you learn in algebra. Again, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're absolutely going to need uh, to be able to handle a problem like this. Now, if you want to go ahead and give this a shot, go ahead and pause the video and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the solution in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to walk through exactly how to do this. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics. And I'm especially speaking to those of you out there that struggle in math. I'm telling you right now, there's no such thing as a bad math uh, student, okay, or someone who can't learn math. What you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my Math Help program. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. It will help you out big time. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a math section, there's a ton of them out there. Things like the GED, SAT, ACT, Alex, Accuplacer, ASVAB, teacher certification exams. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning middle and high school math courses for homeschoolers. I'm really proud of that. I've been working with homeschoolers for many, many years. Um, also, hopefully you have awesome math notes. If you do not, you need to work and improve on your note-taking. Very, very important uh, in terms of math, of uh, being successful in math. But I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video just in case uh, you want to pick up my notes. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this. The square root of 20 plus the square root of 80. Here is the answer. And there you go. Okay, so the square root of 20 plus the square root of 80. Uh, the answer that we want in terms of algebra is 6 times the square root of 5. Again, we're not looking to do this using decimals on our calculator. But if you got this right, you're like, yes, I know how to do this. And you got this particular problem right. Well, then let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus any 100%. Matter of fact, let's throw in a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Okay. Now, if you got something that's kind of like this, but you didn't get this exactly, but you think you're on the right track, well, we're going to talk about exactly what we need to do here to simplify and add square roots. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. And the first, uh, basically the first two things that you need to know, there's some other things, but look, I'm going to kind of condense this down into two main ideas uh, to be able to add or and or subtract square roots because it's basically the same uh, procedure that you use. So the first thing is you definitely need to understand perfect squares, okay? These numbers, perfect squares, so uh, let me go ahead and just show you some. So 4, 9, 16, 25, these are what we call perfect squares. So let's take a look at 4. 4 is a perfect square because we could take 2 and square it. So 2 squared is 4. And then, of course, 9 is the result of 3 squared and 16 is the result of 4 squared, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're dealing with square roots um, in algebra, you want to be on the lookout for these perfect square um, numbers, okay? And uh, specifically, we're going to be looking for perfect squares as factors. I'm going to get into that a little bit here uh, in a second. The next thing you need to know about square roots and or radicals is this property here. Okay, so the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. And uh, this is a particular property that basically allows us to split apart one big square root into two smaller square roots two or more square roots of the individual uh, factors of a particular product. So you'll see this here in a second. So if you kind of get 
uh, these two main ideas, well, then that's what we're going to need in order to uh, simplify this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So here is the square root of 20. Okay, so what you want to do, I'll get into this uh, 80 here in a second, is you want to look at this 20 and you want to think in terms, can I factor 20 um, where I can get a perfect square as a factor? In other words, I can go, okay, 20 is the same thing as 2 times 10. Uh, it's the same thing as 1 times 20. But here's the deal. 2 and 10, uh, these numbers here are not perfect square, uh, perfect square numbers, right? I'm on the lookout again for these numbers. I'm like, oh, 4 is a perfect square. So, oh, I can write 20 as 4 times 5. And that's what you want to do because 4 is a perfect square. And I'll show you exactly why we uh, want to find these perfect squares as factors. So 20, okay, is going to be equal to 4 times 5. And I'm going to write specifically 20 as the, the product of 4 times 5 because this 4 is a perfect square. Okay, let's talk about 80 here. I'll come back to this in a second. So 80, you're like, oh, okay, 80 is the same thing as 4 times 20 because 4 is a perfect square. But you're thinking about like, well, 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5. So now I have 4 times 4. So you could write 80 as 16 times 5. So the way you really want to uh, uh, rewrite these numbers is try to find the largest perfect square factor. Okay. All right. Now, even if you didn't have the largest perfect square factor, you, you, keep, you can keep simplifying these square roots and it would still end up the same way. But always want to be on the kind of lookout again for these numbers. Okay, this is going to be the key. All right, so now what do we do with these perfect square factors? Well, this is where this property of the square root of a times b equaling to the square root of a times the square root of b, I can basically split apart this one big square root and write um, this product as the product of two individual square roots. So the square root of 4 times 5 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 and what's the advantage of doing that? Well, here I have a lovely opportunity to take this square root of 4, which, of course, is 2. And we're only talking about the principal uh, square root, which is the positive version of it. So square root of 4 times the square root of 5 is the same thing as 2 times the square root of 5. And that's how we want to write that answer. So when we come over here, I have the square root of 16 times 5. I can write that as the individual square roots of the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. The square root of uh, 16, of course, is 4. So that's going to be 4 times the square root of 5. So there you go. Okay, so this is pretty much um, all the work that you have to do in order to uh, see if you ac actually can add these square roots. Okay, so you're like, wow, that's a lot of work. Well, yes, it is. But uh, this is um, uh, kind of like what you need to do. Anytime in algebra you're dealing with square roots of numbers like the square root of 90, things like that, you need to be thinking of perfect squares and kind of rewriting each of these square roots in its most simplest form. So now I have this basically the equivalent problem, 2 times the square root of 5 plus uh, 4 times the square root of 5. So now can we add those up? Yes, you can. Okay. And here's the uh, kind of the rule for adding and subtracting square roots. As long as you have the exact same square root, this is very much like adding like terms in algebra, what we can do is simply just add the coefficients. So because this is both, these both have the square root of 5, we simply add these numbers here, 2 and 4. So this is 6 square root of 5. So for example, if I had the 2, if I had 2 times the square root of 5 and I had 4 times the square root of 3, I could not add these two square roots because this is square root of 5, this is square root of 3. They have to be exactly the same. Now, what happens if I had, let's say, the cube root of 5? Okay, let's say I had this, and I wanted to add 2 to, uh, square root of 5 plus 4 cube root of 5. Could I add these? No. Again, these have to be perfectly the same. So if I had uh, 2 uh, times the cube root of 5, and then I had a 4 times the cube root of 5. Well, I can add this up. This would be 6 cube root of 5, okay? All right, so I kind of just, um, uh, you know, give you somewhat of an overview of how to do this. There's a lot of uh, little uh, properties and things that you really need to master. But, you know, again, we're kind of covering a lot of stuff here when it comes to square roots and radicals. If you need additional help with this, I'm going to suggest checking out, like, my Algebra 1 course, maybe Algebra 1, Algebra 2, depending on what level you're at. 
I also have additional videos on my YouTube channel about square roots and radicals, but you need to understand this, okay? This is super important uh, for algebra, and hopefully this video helped you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.